Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. As you know, today, roster cutdown day down to the 53-man roster. The deadline was at 4 p.m. A lot of guys got waived. There's some surprises, some trades that occurred, and now the Giants are sitting wondering, how is this offensive line going to shake out? You know, they brought in Billy Price, formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals, and they brought in Ben Bredesen of the Baltimore Ravens, fourth-round pick last year out of Michigan. We're going to talk about both of those players, what they're going to bring to this team, the massacre that occurred on the offensive line, especially all the depth that our line had going in today is gone, absolutely gone. But before we dive into all the players that were released, Anthony, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It was a really active day for the New York Giants. Of course, they cut their roster down to 53 men, but they also had a couple of trades go down in the past 24 hours, which I thought was super interesting. You know, just going out there, being active and trying to improve the depth on the roster. I don't think they're done by any means. I'm pretty sure tomorrow we're going to have like a fresh new batch of roster moves to give you guys and update you on uh, because I think there's a lot more trades to be made and a lot more depth to be added, particularly, particularly at tight end and a couple other spots. So we got to, you know, stay paying attention to all of that. But of course, cut day. I don't really like cut day. This is like a depressing day. Of course, many of you know, I'm a huge David Sills fan. David Sills did not make the roster. And a couple other players that were all fan favorites right this summer didn't make it. And that happened league wide. And cut day is like really cool sometimes because you have your players that you root for all summer long. Those roster bubble guys, you want to see them make it. Half of them do and half of them don't. And honestly, today, you kind of just watch like hundreds of men lose their jobs. So I hate cut day. I think it's actually a really depressing moment. But at times, it can be exciting. Of course, when the Giants are making trades, when certain players you really wanted to make the roster do make the roster, there are things to be excited by. But ultimately, not the happiest day in the NFL today. Not by any means, but let's list off the guys that were released by the Giants today. They had eight veterans were released, 17 players were waived, and one of their players was put on the pup list, or really remains on the pup list, um, and will miss the first six games of the regular season because of it. The eight veterans that were released, running back Corey Clement, offensive line Chad Slade, Jonathan Harrison, and Kenny Wiggins, linebackers Afadio Denebo, Ryan Anderson, defensive lineman Willie Henry, and long snapper Casey Kreder, who will be... Uh, re-signing with the team. They just needed to cut him for a couple, a day or two, um, just to create enough room for the other players. There probably will be a little bit more movement in the coming days, and Casey Crowder will be re-added. But let's just talk about those veterans for a second. Corey Clement, (coughs) a guy that I actually was unsure um, about going into today. I thought that he might actually get that that, uh, third roster spot over Gary Brightwell, but apparently Gary Brightwell offers a little bit more on special teams. He's also a sixth-round rookie, so the Giants always want to go with those youngsters. Instead of, you know, free agent journeymen like Corey Clement um, that did have a red zone fumble this this, uh, preseason. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, they go with Brightwell, the rookie out of Arizona. A good running back, had a couple of, um, you know, action, has some action plays against the Patriots. But he's he's a guy that you really want to just develop behind the scenes. Maybe he can be a kick returner. Maybe he can be um, something on special teams. Maybe he can, uh, you know, try and rush the punter. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure out that in the in the future. But then you go over to Chad Slade, a guy who really hasn't made an impact on this Giants team. They decided, you know what, let's cut him. We'll bring in somebody else, and they did. And Billy Price and Ben Bredenson, we're going to talk about in a little bit. Jonathan Harrison was a big surprise, in my opinion. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had an inkling that he might get released because he just hadn't done enough, in my opinion. He really only plays center. He plays those guard positions as well, just not at a good level. He was really beaten up uh, when he did play left guard um, against the Patriots. But he really serves that center role. They brought in Billy Price. There was no need for Harrison after that. Um, So a surprise for most people. Um, And I think that Harrison being replaced by Billy Price offers him a little bit more versatility. Anthony, what are you thinking about those three? Corey Clement, Chad Slade, and Jonathan Harrison. Chad Slade, okay with being cut. Like, totally okay with that. Really have nothing much to say about that. Corey Clement, I was surprised by that. I like the way he runs. I thought that he was a pretty solid player this preseason. I know he had that fumble. The fumble wasn't necessarily his fault. Uh, He did a good job protecting the ball, and I I believe a helmet just, like, got slammed into his arm. You know, like, things like that happen, and it's not exactly the running back's fault. But, you know, you look at Saquon Barkley, who's had, like, one fumble in two years, three years, pretty much. So, 
I, I don't know. It's neither here nor there with that. It's just the fumble I don't think is what damned him. Some could argue that it did. But Corey Clement, I would have liked to see him make the roster. I wasn't super impressed with Gary Brightwell. I understand he is the rookie. He is the six-round pick. And I guess they feel more comfortable with him on special teams. But Corey Clement has contributed on special teams in the past throughout his career. So I don't know. That one I'm a little confused by. I wanted to see Corey Clement make the roster. But then moving on to Jonathan Harrison, that one did surprise me as well until I saw the other moves that the Giants made, like, of course, trading for Ben Breederson. Now, that kind of just cancels out the Jonathan Harrison, you know, release because Harrison, I thought, was quality depth, especially at center. I actually wasn't impressed, but wasn't like dissatisfied with the way that he played against the Patriots when he did play some guard. I thought that he had a decent performance. And ultimately, I would have liked to see him make the final 53-man roster, but I understand what the Giants are doing. They're trying to get young on the offensive line with the depth there. With guys like Ben Breederson, Billy Price, these are young guys that they're taking chances on. So maybe these guys haven't developed fully, haven't hit their ceilings just yet. Unlike a guy like Jonathan Harrison, who's been around in the league for much longer, probably hit his ceiling. Not much, you know, vertical uh prowess to go up with right he's probably not getting any better at any point in his career but these guys might so they might provide long-term death depth uh jonathan harrison was short-term depth so i understand why the giants made that move ultimately even though it did catch me by surprise initially yeah i agree um and just a little side note that popped up on twitter right now the uh, nick sirianni head coach of the eagles just announced that jalen hurts is their qb1 um good for the giants i guess jalen hurts I love it. I just I'm, can't wait to I'm see I'm a super disbeliever in Jalen Hurts, man, honestly. I'm like I, I don't believe in him and at all. Not just all, because so. we're Giants fans. I just don't I just don't trust him as an accurate passer. I don't think he can get through the reads. Yeah. I think he's a leader. I think he's a leader. I think he has some good running abilities. Um he has a strong arm, but at the end of the day, to be a quarterback, you have to have elite mental processing. To be a good quarterback, you have to have elite mental processing. And that's kind of where Daniel Jones falters as well. He misses reads. We saw it against uh, the Patriots in that flanker's drive yeah. when you had Devontae Booker coming across the line of scrimmage on that on that um, that drag. He completely missed him. You know that you need to hit those those. Uh, and sometimes that bails out your offensive line too. Instead, he took a sack. Um, but let's head back to this really quickly because I could I could get into something I don't really want to get into right, right. now <laughs> for the next one. Next veteran that was released, Kenny Wiggins. Um, he was a former Detroit Lion. You know, bought over. And, you know, didn't really show enough. Again, the Giants really released all of their depth offensive linemen except for Nate Solder. They also surprisingly cut linebacker Afadio Denebo, who just really wasn't a fit. They thought they got a gem with him. We thought so too. But the reality is, is he just doesn't fit our 3-4 scheme. He's not really an outside linebacker. Um, he really is more of a, a, a you know, 4-3 defensive end. Um, he was really going to be used sparingly. The Giants just ate the $1 million they guaranteed for him. They also released Ryan Anderson, who was going to be suspended for the first four games anyway due to uh, performance-enhancing drugs. He was uh, caught doing some stuff. It could have been a Golden Tate situation where uh, you know it was in, in some potion he was taking to make him more fertile. But again, nobody really knows this. <laughs> uh, Ryan Anderson cut. This is That's actually what happened to Golden Tate, so I don't want to see you shaking your head, Anthony. Um, <laughs> but Ryan Anderson... Um, cut he's gone defensive lineman Willie Henry and we also we talked about Casey Crowder so you know Anthony what are you thinking about I guess the really big one if Fadio Denebo was the one that kind of was a little surprising but we also kind of saw it coming at the same time I did see it coming I actually wrote an article yesterday and published that that said could Fadio Denebo be the surprise cut this year uh, I thought that he would be and you know I'm not the only one there were plenty of people who were feeling this way just because he failed to really pop off on the tape this year. Like in the summer, he never really stood out and made any plays. He kind of just stood in the background and faltered. And we thought that he would be a big impact player, rotational pass rusher with versatility to put his hand in the dirt or stand up on the outside. And ultimately, we just didn't see that this summer. Guys like Trent Harris stood out way more, looked like a much better player. I actually just messaged Trent Harris's mother and congratulated her and her son because I really like that kid. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, and I, I think that he's actually going to be a pretty impactful player as a rotational pass rusher this year. He looked far better than Afadio Denebo all summer long. And so I'm ultimately happy that the Giants made that decision to release uh, Afadio Denebo and go ahead with Trent Harris as their second string outside linebacker on that side of the ball. So pretty happy with that move. Really happy for Trent Harris and not completely surprised by Afadi. He just never really stood out. Yeah, that's that's essentially, you know, the reality of the situation. Um, we wanted him to, but just didn't make the roster. And one guy that did make the roster, my guy, Rodarius Williams, his mom actually hit me up and, and was asking me if he made the roster. And I told her that he did. 
and she was super excited. Um, so really, really uh, good news there. Rodarius Williams really showed us that he can be a good player as a sixth round pick. And I think for the most part, he's actually close to being that number two corner um, rather than the, in the reserve portion of the team. You know, he's he's behind James Bradbury and Adore Jackson, but he could be called, you know, to get into some action um, this season. And I imagine he will be at some point. Um, but let's talk about the 17 players that were waived. Quarterback, Brian Lewerke, 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 I don't know. Rider, wide receivers, David Sills. Damian Willis and Matt Cole, David Sills Army. I am uh, really, really dumbfounded at the decision. No, honestly, I really don't want to see David Sills not make this roster. He'll probably end up in the practice squad or another team will pick him up. But David Sills, he just didn't have enough utilization on special teams. That's really what it boiled down to. And I also think that Dante Pettis, um, he made the roster over David Sills. And I'm not going to say that Dante Pettis is better than David Sills, but at the very least, he has way more experience in a real NFL game against true starters and not backups. And I will say Dante Pettis at the end of the 2020 season was our best receiver. And that's not saying much considering we didn't have much to work with, but he he looked better than all, and everybody, maybe aside from Sterling Shepard. Um, and he looked pretty, pretty good. So I think that he deserves that spot just based on what he showed us in real time play um, instead of what he showed uh, with Mike Glennon against backup Patriot players, you know, that, so that's kind of how I feel. Although I do love David Sills. I do hope he gets an opportunity, whether it's with the giants or not. Um, I hopefully he he makes it. But Anthony, I'll let you give your take on da- uh, David Sills and Damian Wills as well. Yeah, ultimately the debate that we've been having for weeks now is will the Giants hold seven wide receivers? Everyone was like, no way. And David Sills isn't going to make it because of that. I've been saying, yes, they will hold seven. Look at how injured this group already is. Kenny Galladay has an injury. John Ross has an injury. Sterling Shepard has been injury prone in the past. Darius Slayton has been injury prone in the past and has actually picked up an injury recently. And same with Kadarius Toney has an injury right now. So I was like, yeah, they're holding seven receivers. I think that David Sills will be the seventh. I think that he will make the roster. Ultimately, I was wrong. I was right about the seven receivers part. They did hold seven, but they decided to go with CJ Board and Dante Pettis instead as the final two receivers. So, you know, my take on that is CJ Board, simply put, is just more of a special teams contrib- contributor. Dante Pettis, simply put, more experience. And that's ultimately how uh, David Sills misses this roster opportunity. I really hope that he gets signed to the practice squad. I love the connection that he's developed with Daniel Jones. I would love it if, you know, if any of these players, God forbid, were to get injured, any of these receivers on the roster, I would love for David Sills to be called up from the practice squad, go in there because he already has a connection with Daniel Jones. Another player that I feel bad for is Damian Willis because he actually had a really good summer. He looked really good kind of in every preseason game that he played in throughout training camp. So, again, I hate cut day because these guys work their asses off. And some of them look really good and play really good football. But there's just not a spot for them on this roster. And that's really unfortunate for both David Sills and Damian Willis, two guys who I thought both had really good summers um, and showed a lot of good stuff throughout the course of the training camp process. So it's unfortunate. Yes, the Giants did go with seven receivers. I think that's the right decision. Uh, They have a lot of depth there now. I wish David Sills was one of those seven, but... He's not. I understand why, and I am happy with the seven that the Giants did put on this roster. Yeah, and you know what? The Giants just didn't do those back-end guys any any favors because they went out and they drafted Kadarius Tony, adding another receiver to that room, um, and they went out and got John Ross and Kenny Galladay. So David Sills, if Kadarius Tony, John Ross isn't is in, uh, you know brought onto the squad, I think David Sills or Willis actually makes this roster. But at the end of the day, you don't want to be handing out starting jobs to players. You want good, talented guys. Um, and I think that the Giants have one of the deepest wide receiver uh, crops or you know units in the league when they are healthy, and that's a big when, <laughs> uh, since you know we don't really know what the status of Kenny Galladay is right now. Joe Judge said about an hour ago we will see where Kenny Galladay is next week. The good news is they still have time, so you know that's kind of that about Kenny Galladay. A couple more injury updates. Joe Judge said that the next few days will tell a lot about Shane Lemieux's status. And I think that's also a big indication that Ben Bredesen could end up starting week one at left guard if Shane Lemieux doesn't, um, you know, have that, uh, you know, that injury settle, that knee issue. They could also look to move Nick Gates to left guard and put in Billy Price um, at center. Billy Price is way better at center than he is at guard. Um, so we'll see what they do there, but I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Hopefully Shane Lemieux was ready. With Saquon Barkley, they said they won't have a decision until game week, and that is coming up in less than a week and a half. So pretty excited about that. Um, but let's jump back into some of these players that were cut. These are the 17 players that were waived. Of course, we just named Brian Lewerke, David Sills, Damian Willis, and Matt Cole. Tight ends, Nakia Griffin-Stewart, Jake Hausman, running back, Sandro Platzgumer, offensive lineman, Jackson Barton, Jake Burton, Brett Hedgie, 
and defensive lineman David Moa, Willie, Willie Henry, and Elijah Qualls. Also, thank the good Lord's linebacker Devontae Down has been released. I I saw saw that. I cheered I cheered for joy. I mean, he was a source of the majority of my anxiety last year on defense. Uh, when they had no choice but to play him, I was immediately calling my therapist and saying, Devontae Downs is in the game. I need you here now. Um, and finally, he's off this. I don't know how he lasted this long, to be honest with you. Same with Sam Beal. I mean, he made the roster. Sam Beal made the team. No idea how that happened. Um, but apparently, he looked a lot better, and he got better and better. Apparently, he must have some sort of um, blackmail on Dave Gettleman, whether it be an Afro picture of him when he was 1940s. Who knows? But he's got to have something on Dave because, I mean, the guy missed two full seasons of football. And now he's back in with this team. And he, I didn't see enough from him to think that he would make the roster over. Um, I, I guess they, I guess Madre Hopper Harper was his only competition. I think Quincy Wilson would have made it over him. They also kept Josh Jackson, who they just traded for too. Um, and he hasn't even practiced with the giants yet. He's only, he, he got injured in the first practice. So they kept him around as well. But um, that that's, that's the majority of those 17 players. They also had Nico Lalos, who was uh, released, defensive backs, Madre Harper, Chris Johnson, and Jordan Peters. I think Jordan Peters is a, a good practice squad guy, along with David Sills, Damian Willis, and Matt Cole. Nico Lalos, though, that was an interesting one as well, Anthony. You know, what are you thinking about some of these guys, your reaction to Devontae Downs being cut? Um, and they're definitely going to be going after some tight end talent, by the way, um, getting rid of uh, Griffin Stewart and Hausman. One guy to keep an eye on um, is Jeff Hollister. Um He's one to keep an eye on. Was cut by the Seahawks today. Um, he's connected with Judge back in the Patriots days. Um, he's a pretty good receiving tight end. I think he would serve us well as the fourth guy in uh, in that unit. Yeah, I absolutely expect the Giants to add a fourth tight end. They have three right now. Two of them are hobbled. Kyle Rudolph is not 100% healthy. Evan Engram is not 100% healthy. The only one that is is Caden Smith, and I'm pretty sure he had an injury last season. So Giants need to be really careful there. they got to add some depth at tight end. I do think by the end of tomorrow, they'll have another tight end on the roster and hold four going into the regular season. But my reaction to Devontae Downs being cut, I don't like to cheer for any of these guys being cut because it is such a like sad day and crappy day for these players. But if there is one player that I'm going to be happy about being cut, it is Devontae Downs just because he was such a struggle to watch for the Giants. I just could not stand the way that he played. I thought his tackle angles were terrible. I saw him miss tackles pretty much every single game, whether it be just because he's not tackling properly or he's not taking the right pursuit angle, or sometimes it just looked like there was a lack of effort on those tackles. Like he was afraid of contact. I'm just not a fan of Devontae Downs' game. I wish him the best of luck going forward. Hope he lands with some other team, maybe somewhere in the NFC East so that he can miss tackles on Saquon Barkley. That would be great. But ultimately, again, don't want to celebrate it too much. But then you mentioned Rodarius Williams and Sam Beal. I'm very happy that Rodarius Williams made this roster. He absolutely deserved it. He's another one of those players that had a great summer. I did a Tony's takes on him. I really talked about how great his training camp has been. Um, and he finished strong, too, in that final preseason game. So he really earned that roster, maybe more than anybody this summer. So very happy for him and excited for him. Sam Beal, I was surprised to see him make this roster. But like you said, I guess his only competition was Madre Harper. And I'm not a huge fan of his anyway. The Giants technically have invested more in Sam Beal anyway. So maybe it's smart for them to not give up quite yet if he is improving behind the scenes and we just haven't seen it yet. So hopefully he can be some quality depth. Um, and I guess that's my take on all the guys that you just listed there. But uh, Jeff Hollister, I do think that's another name to keep an eye on. I want Jacob Hollister. Jacob oh, Hollister. I yeah, up. I knew that. From the Bills. But you said Jeff, Bills. And I was like, okay, he must know. So let me go along with it. Yeah. But <laughs> he was with the Bills uh, this offseason, but he was with Seattle last year. So he's been moving right. around a little bit. He was with the Patriots, though, back um, during he his actually, early portions. I believe he was the guy that like started the season off like two years ago, the 2019 season, like really strong with the Seahawks and then got injured. Um, yeah. But then going going to throw out like two more names, Matt Lacoste is another tight end. I believe mm -hmm. he used to be on the Giants, yep. right? He was he caught was, by yep. the Patriots today. So keep an eye on him as well. Maybe Dave Gettleman likes him and will want to add him back. And then I'll also say keep an eye on uh, Hudson, Tanner Hudson. He was the leading receiver for the, the Tampa Bucks. Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this preseason so there's a good chance that any one of those guys or even somebody else that we didn't list could be the move for the Giants um, and yeah because they're definitely going to have to add a fourth tight end to this roster with the injuries that they have on the tight end position yeah no I 100% agree and with Sam Beal specifically I want to talk about him for a second um, like you said and like I said before I think Maje Harper was really his only competition what I will say 
he looked pretty good against the run. I noticed him showing up, um, making stops against the running game, and I think the Giants value that tremendously. Um, a, a cornerback who will stand up in you know in the face of a running back and and take take a guy down. So I think they uh, saw value in that um, as an asset for Sam Beal, but. As a coverage guy, I think he just missed so much time. You know, he's going to need time to get back into the flow of things. He's not an immediate starter by any means. I, I would put Rodarius Williams ahead of him on the roster 100% of the time. Um, I think Sam Beal is last resort, right? He's last resort. That's if your backup gets injured, you go to Sam Beal at this point. So we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, it's definitely possible the Giants go out and get another tight end or something and then end up releasing Sam Beal. Who knows? They still have Josh Jackson as well, who is coming back from injury. Um, after being injured in the first practice with the Giants. But the Giants made some big moves, man. They also traded for a couple guys. And before we dive into that, I'm just going to list off the active. So this is the 53-man roster. Things will change in the coming days. But of course, you have Daniel Jones, Mike Lennon. I found it kind of funny how they listed Mike Lennon above Daniel Jones um, on the Giants website. It's alphabetical <laughs> pretty, order. I know, alphabetical but it's just order. it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny to me that they listed yeah, Mike Lennon above too. Daniel Jones. I noticed that too because at the receiver position, it was CJ Board, then Kenny Galladay. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I realized it was an alphabetical. It's kind of funny. It was just funny. Um, then you have the offensive line, Bed Bredinson, Bed, Bed, Ben Bredinson, Nick Gates, Will Hernandez, Shane Lemieux, Matt Pert. Billy Price, Nate Solder, Andrew Thomas. I think that looks a lot better than it did last week with the depth pieces that we had. Um, they will be adding another one or two at least. They need more offensive tackle depth uh, for sure. Running back, Saquon Barkley, Devontae Booker, Gary Brightwell, Cullen Gillespie, and Eli Penny. This is the, one of the only teams in the NFL that has two fullbacks. Cullen Gillespie is a special teams ace, and Eli Penny is capable of performing on special teams. He's a running back, and he's your fullback in short yardage situations. Um, so I think they see value in those guys. Then you have the wide receivers, CJ Board, Kenny Galladay, Dante Pettis, John Ross, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, Kadarius Tony. an extremely deep wide receiver unit that I think is capable of being tremendous if they can stay healthy. Tight ends, Evan Ingram, Kyle Rudolph, Caden Smith. I could totally see them targeting a guy like Jacob Hollister. Um, he had six touchdowns and 660, sorry, he had 66 catches and six touchdowns over the past two seasons with Seattle. So I, I imagine a bunch of teams will have him in mind. Um, let's see here. We also have Austin Johnson on the defensive line, Raymond Johnson, Dexter Lawrence, Danny Shelton, and Leonard Williams. Defensive back, Sam Beal, James Bradbury, Keon Crossan, Darnay Holmes, Adoree Jackson, Josh Jackson, Julian Love, Xavier McKinney, Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan, Rodarius Williams. Linebackers, you have Cam Brown, Lorenzo Carter, Carter Coughlin, who I, I love that he was able to get a spot here. Tay Crowder, Trent Harris, Anthony. What are you thinking about Trent Harris really quickly? I want to get your take on him. Yeah, like I mentioned, I really like Trent Harris. I think that he has like a surprising amount of speed off the edge and a lot of bend. And he does have a quite a, like a few pass rushing moves. Uh, really like what he does. I didn't see him contribute too much as a run defender. And I did see some snaps from last season's film because he did play actually quite a bit last year. People don't seem to realize that he played 70 something snaps for the Giants and even had a sack against the Eagles last year, like a half a sack. It was combined with Jabril Peppers, but he was the main one who got there first. Um, so Trent Harris, I did see a snap from last season where he kind of got blown up and run defense. And I think that's ultimately what he needs to work on the most and improve on. But I did do the Tony's takes on him a couple weeks ago. And I did say that I think he will make the final 53 man roster. I was right about that. And I think that it's because of the value that he provides as a rotational pass rusher, a lot of speed off the edge. I like that a whole lot. And I do think that he's going to be a solid depth piece and really good contributor on defense. How do you see Ellerson Smith making an impact after all? Do you think he'll end up on the pup list and miss the first six games of the season? I think there's a really strong chance of that. I haven't seen him practice at all. I haven't seen him really do much of anything for the Giants. I didn't think that he would have much of an impact in his first season anyway. And if he did, I thought it would be on special teams as, you know, on the defensive line against field goals, right? Trying to block kicks because that's what he did twice in college. He had two blocked kicks. He's six foot seven. He has like the longest arms in the NFL. So if you want to use utilize that, you put him down in front of the uh, field goal unit and you try and get his long arms up there to block some kicks, tip some field goals. So that's ultimately what I see him doing long term in the NFL is being a solid special teams contributor in that specific role. Not sure I would invest a lot of money into that role, but hopefully he can develop into something on the edge as a little bit more of a pass rusher as time goes on. Right now, though, I think dealing with this injury, he probably will land on the PUP, be there for a little while. I'm happy that they didn't put him on injured reserve, though, and end his season because that means he can come back this year and hopefully contribute on special teams. But 
long term, he does need to develop more as a pass rusher. He just can't right now because he's injured. So hopefully he can get healthy real soon and we can start to develop him in that regard and utilize him on the special teams unit. Yeah, it's really disappointing he was uh, you know, forced to miss this entire preseason and training camp period. I thought he was going to have some good value, but you know, we'll have to wait a little bit. Um, so the next guys on the list and the linebackers, Trent Harris, of course, you just talked about him. Blake Martinez, Aziz Ojolari, Reggie Ragland, Ellerson Smith there, Ocean Eximenez. I think Ocean Eximenez, low-key, is going to be good, a good pass rusher for this year in a rotational role. Lorenzo Carter's looked awesome, but I imagine Aziz Ojolari, Lorenzo Carter will be our starting outside linebackers to begin the season. Um, and then you have the special teams unit, Riley Dixon, Graham Gano. That is your 53-man roster as of now. However, there are going to be some additions and subtractions. Like, for example, the Giants could easily go and say, let's go, to, go get ourselves another offensive lineman. And then keep in mind that they will be re-signing Casey Kreider as well. So somebody from this list has got to go. Um, I guess it. if I was to guess, I may, could, maybe they, I don't Sam know if Beal? Allison, well, well, Sam Beal, but I also don't know if Allison Smith is on the pup list. Does he count against the rosters? You know what I mean? Because yeah, Aaron Robinson is also on the pup list, so he's missing the first six games. So if they, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like Alison Smith is on the pup list. Otherwise, he's you know, not. He and been. Aaron Robinson is not listed on the roster, but he is on the pup list. I think there's probably yes. a maximum amount of players you can place on the pup list, but I wouldn't Maybe. be surprised to see the Giants place Ellerson Smith on there, free up one roster spot, and then use that to get Casey Kreider. But again, we did mention a couple other guys that were on the bubble. Like Sam Beal, you know, maybe they don't ultimately hold seven receivers, right? We say they're going to. What if they don't? And then they go ahead and they use that to go get another tight end or something. There's a lot more moves that the Giants could make. And I guess now we just play the waiting game and continue to update you guys as uh, time goes on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And let's talk about these two acquisitions that we did make today. Billy Price and Ben Bredenson. I want to talk about Ben Bredenson for a second because um, he actually is a player that could be pushing for starting snaps on this team, right? Ben Bredesen, former Michigan guy, not the most athletic specimen in the world, but I will say he is a solid player, six foot five and 320 pounds. The Giants traded away a fourth round selection in return. They got Bredesen, they got a fifth round pick um, for 2022 and a seventh round pick for 2023. The fifth round pick is the Chiefs' fifth round pick, so it'll probably be at the end of the fifth round. Um, something to keep in mind in terms of value. But a lot there's people said a lot of good things about Bredesen. People are saying he could be a starter on this team. And the thing I like about this is we're not giving a starting position away to Shane Lemieux. You know, Shane Lemieux, we all want him to be great, but the reality is, is he's not that great. And he's just missed a ton of time that he really needed to get some continuity in chemistry with this offensive line. Bredesen is probably a better player than him. He's he's more physical, he's bigger, he's more disciplined. Um, and I think he fits that power gap scheme really nicely for Jason Garrett's uh, strategy and, and scheme. So Hopefully he can uh, you know, pick up his offense quickly and, and offer some value as at least a depth player, if not a starter. But this is an interesting take that um, – so Paul Alexander, who was a former Cincinnati Bengals offensive line coach, um, he's you know been all around the NFL, and I think he's also with the Cowboys at one point as well. So he said, Ben Bredesen is a great move for the New York Giants. I've watched him this preseason, and he's good. He has He's a good PFF grade. Um, he could be the G-Men's best interior offensive lineman this year, which is a huge statement to make. I know we do have um, Will Hernandez, but Bredesen this preseason over 182 snaps, mostly at right guard. He did have a little bit of time at left guard and center, but mostly at right guard. He played um, – so he only allowed two pressures and two hurries during 182 snaps. Don't want to jump to conclusions here, but I will say – better than the majority of what our offensive line produced this preseason, um, even against you know starters or backups. Our, our depth, they they fired all of them today. Every single depth player, aside from Nate Solder, they fired today. Ben Bredesen immediately becomes our best interior guard, you know, um, depth piece at least. He could be better than Shane Lemieux. Anthony, you know, what are you thinking about this trade? Are you hoping that he can push Shane Lemieux for that starting job at least? Offer some competition. Let him let Shane Lemieux work for it. I'm not in the business of giving away starting jobs anymore. Yeah, I would love to see some competition here, and I hope that Ben Bredesen can push for some competition, maybe push for that starting job. At the very least, if Shane Lemieux is not ready to go week one, still dealing with that knee injury, I'd like to see Ben Bredesen get the first crack at it, or at least hopefully win that battle, right, to get to the starting position. He has had a really strong preseason. He's graded out extremely well via PFF. And I think that's a little funny, right? Because the Giants 
I, I can't tell whether or not they use PFF in analytics sometimes because sometimes they'll make a move for a guy like Ben Bredesen, who's graded out super, super well on PFF's metrics, right? And then they'll go for Billy Price, who has been like the worst PFF guard or center for the past like three years, right? So I don't know. It's always interesting with the Giants and really evaluating NFL teams and trying to see exactly how they evaluate players because we know that some of them really do devote to the PFF like metric scale and some of them really don't. So it's kind of weird. The Giants seem to flip flop there, especially with the Andrew Thomas pick. He was the top PFF tackle in, in his draft year, but that's neither here nor there. That's just a little tangent. I think, I think is a little bit interesting, but Ben Bredesen, I do like him. I do think that he's a pretty physical player. I think he's more of your power blocking offensive guard rather than your like speedy finesse guy, which I think is good for the Giants. They do need some more power gap run blockers. And I think that ultimately can be what Ben Bredesen is. He was phenomenal in pass protection during this preseason. And hopefully after a good preseason, 182 total snaps and an 80.8 overall PFF grade, that's really, really good. Hopefully he can develop from that. Maybe this is just the start of Ben Bredesen, you know, reaching towards like a greater pasture, like going off in a better future now that he's left the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe he just wasn't a fit there. So maybe this can be a career resurgence for Ben Bredesen as he gets traded to the New York Giants. And maybe he could be ultimately the starter at left guard. I would love to see that. But ultimately, I want it to be a battle. And so I'm excited to see the battle between Shane Lemieux and Ben Bredesen over the next couple of weeks and into the regular season to see long term who might win this starting job. Absolutely. Now, I do want to discuss um, Billy Price for a moment, too. So Billy Price, you know, he's a guy that really hasn't offered much with Cincinnati, right? He tore his pec going into the combine, and then he had foot injuries um, during his time at Cincinnati. He has 1,354 total snaps at center and both guard positions. So he has played multiple spots. His best season came in 2018, his rookie deal, uh, his rookie year, um, and he played center. That was his best season. So I, if we're going to play him anywhere, it would be at center um, as a backup for Nick Gates or if we have to you know, shift Nick Gates over to a tackle or a guard spot, which he has experience doing. So that's something to keep in mind. He's not the most athletic guy in the world. He is kind of actually um, probably hovering around the average range in athleticism. Um, it shows up on tape. He has short 32-inch arms, which put him at the second uh, 22nd percentile for interior offensive linemen. His wingspan is in the 7th percentile, and he has a 9 and 3 fourths inch hands, which puts him in the 45th percentile. So, uh, you know, when you're looking at a player like Billy Price, you're not getting an, a superior athlete by any means. You're not getting this physical specimen that's going to bulldoze people or run over um, pass rushers. He is basically just relying on his fundamentals to get by. And I think that... That's not a bad thing. We've seen players do a lot with a, with a little, um, <clears throat> but I will say that Price does come with uh, you know minimal traits, and they're really hoping that this transfer over to the Giants and this Rob Sale led uh, offensive line can help reset him. Right? They're hoping they can get a lot more potential out of him than Cincinnati did. Cincinnati is known for ruining offensive linemen, but then again, so are the Giants recently. So you know you're picking the lesser of two evils here. Hopefully, Rob Sale can turn this thing around, get some good momentum going. But Billy Price, you know, I want him at center, right guard. I would rather have uh, Ben Brennison. Uh, but again, we have Will Hernandez there. Left guard, I'd rather have Bettison um, than Price, in my opinion. He is our backup center, Billy Price. Don't get it twisted. He's not competing for a starting job right now. He is a reserve guy who can play multiple positions, and he is better than um, Jonathan Harrison. That is why that that is why they did this. You know, B.J. Hill, conditional seventh-round pick for next year for Billy Price because – he can play guard and center, maybe not at a great level, but Jonathan Harrison literally cannot play guard. He will get destroyed. Um, he can play center at an average level at best. Billy Price can do a little bit more. So um, that's kind of how I feel. <clears throat> a lot more potential with Price than Jonathan Harrison, Anthony. Um, what are you thinking about Price? I know you're probably in the same boat. It's it's good to have a, a versatile guy, but he's not going to be an immediate starter and don't expect him to be a great offensive lineman for this team. Yeah, I think the thought process here, once again, um, there's two trains of thoughts with this. Once again, you're getting a young guy who could potentially be long-term depth, right? Because he's super young and he has yet to reach his potential, we hope, right? We hope this isn't his ceiling. We hope that he's still, you know, just growing as a player. He's dealt with so many injuries. He played for Cincinnati. I mean, they have just had 
terrible offensive line play for years. A lot of that could be coaching. A lot of that does have to do with injuries. And a lot of that does have to do with discontinuity along that offensive line. So a lot of problems over there. But ultimately, I think that with Billy Price, the Giants are just hoping to get some long-term depth. Hopefully he can come in, be a solid player behind the scenes as a backup for years to come since he is so young. And then the other school of thought with this, I think is similar to the John Ross situation, right? Guy who had potential, first round potential coming out of college in the NFL draft, actually went to the same team, the Cincinnati Bengals, dealt with a lot of injuries, showed some good play, but ultimately just couldn't put it all together. Maybe all he needs is a change of scenery to help him reach that first round potential. And I think that might be the other way that the Giants are looking at this. This is a guy that at one time was a really good football player, ultimately hasn't panned out to be that in the NFL, but maybe there's still something there. He just needs a change of scenery. Maybe the Giants can be what gets him there now. Whether or not you think that's a possibility, considering the Giants' offensive line development the last few years, you know, that's a whole nother debate. But I think that is the way that the Giants are looking at this and the way they're thinking about this Billy Price acquisition. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a hopeful move to improve an offensive line that just was decimated with cuts. And it says a lot, man. I gotta say, that blew my mind. They've all they've preached about is gelling and continuity and chemistry. And then they cut four or five players that they had this offseason. I mean, you you wonder. You know, if you're gonna, if you're not that trustworthy in your offensive line, if you're not tr- that trustworthy in your depth, why didn't they draft anybody? Why are you drafting Gary Brightwell? You know what I mean? Why are you drafting some of these guys? They needed offensive line support. I'm not gonna talk about Trey Smith. I just saying, if they knew that they had issues there, they should have made a move earlier. They, this is professional talent evaluators here. You cannot be going into the regular season with two weeks away and having just caught your entire offensive line depth. It's unacceptable in my opinion. Um, And for the most part, they made some moves to supplement it. They traded away some late round picks, which is okay. Um, But you got to have somebody, man. You got to have somebody. Apparently they have nobody. Now they have Billy Price and Ben Bredesen. Hopefully they can provide a little bit more guys. Um, But hope you enjoyed this episode, breaking down the 53-man roster, taking a look at who was cut, who was waived. There will be some practice squad guys. There will be some moves. There will be some more trades. Um, And we will be on top of it for you guys, as always, my friends. Make sure to subscribe below on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. And we'll catch you guys on the next New York Giants video.